Hey there, Nick Junitakis here. In this video, we're going to go over how to use curl to get an SSL certificate's expiration date, as well as some other information about the certificate. For example, if we go to HTTPS example.com here, we can see we're doing a regular curl request. Here's the entire body of the response, but we're not getting some, you know, information about the SSL certificate. So let's start adding some flags to this command here. And we'll begin by doing dash capital I, which is just going to do a head request to the server instead of a get. This way we don't get the entire body of the response here. Notice there's no HTML. We just get all of the headers back here in the response, which is, uh, you know, getting us halfway there. Then we'll add one more flag here, which is verbose mode. And that is going to give us all sorts of information. We can see the entire TLS handshake process, but more importantly for us right here, we have this entire section about the uh, server certificate. And right there is the expiration date. So this one is going to expire in December, 2022. And if you happen to be watching this video afterwards, chances are you're gonna see some different times there because uh, there is a very good chance that example.com is going to be up with a different certificate then. But we can also see, you know, that the host example.com and matches the search example here we can see everything is verified to be okay we can see a little bit of information of you know where it's registered etc uh, if we rerun this command here then we can also go to the www version of it and take a look there and we can see that uh, the san here the subject alternate name it also matched uh, our certificate here so basically the certificate is valid for example.com www uh, that example.com and potentially some other ones as well. And you might be thinking too, like, well, what if I just want to see the expiration date, but not everything else here? Like maybe we can just very quickly uh, grep that out for like expire date, right? Doing something like this. And uh, spoiler alert, like this actually is not going to work as you might think. So if you do this, then we end up getting all the output that we got before, but then curl is actually going to throw an error here because it didn't find any matches. That is because curl actually writes all of its output to standard error, not standard out. So grep doesn't really find anything because there's nothing in uh, standard out to look for. And uh, we still see all the output here because it's being output to standard error. So that's kind of interesting. So if you did want to grep this out, we actually need to do, uh, well, we could potentially do two different things. So grep has, or curl has a flag called standard error. And we can basically just say, let's, uh, instead of writing to standard error, let's also redirect that to standard out here, which we're using the hyphen, pretty standard Unix convention to do something like that. And uh, now when we do that, all of curl's output is being sent to standard out instead of standard error. And then we can just grep for expire date and then everything works uh, as we as we like. And you know, alternatively, instead of using this built-in flag for curl, we can also just do the uh, standard way on the command line to do this, where we can just, if I can type many different crazy characters here, where uh, we can just redirect standard error here to standard out. And then that should technically work the same. I actually prefer using this method here because you know it is a Unix or Linux convention here to use dash to determine things are, you know, being redirected to standard out, depending on what context you're doing. Maybe this could be like reading something from standard in as well. But yeah, in my brain, it's it's a lot easier to parse this to be like, okay, yes, we're redirecting standard error to standard out this way instead of uh, this way over here. Um, but yeah, that's a quick way to grab this out. And then from here, you know, if you wanted to even further parse this, maybe you just, uh, you know, care about the date for whatever reason for some script that you're writing, you can just always cut that by, let's see, the delimiter. Well, let's just use the colon there and then uh, uh, we will get everything after this colon here, which will be the second thing. And uh, nope, that is only going to get us uh, December 9th. Oh, duh. Yeah, because there's colons here as well. Um, okay, what do you do with cut? There is a way to get not just like the second item, but like the second item and then everything after that as well. I think you just put a dash at the end. Yep, there we go. Cool. So that's an, a little trick there with cut. If you just wanted to get more columns instead of the second one, boom, you can get them all after a specific number. But uh, now you can do whatever you want with this date. Uh, real, realistically, like I didn't have a use case where I wanted to go this far to parse it out, but I just wanted to include that here for completeness. Now, going over the why, like you might be wondering like, why? Like, why would you ever just want to like see a certificate's uh, expiration date? And totally makes sense. And and by the way, um, you can also get the certificate's information in a browser, right? So if, uh, I'm at example.com here. You know, if I click the lock here, I'm using Chrome. Uh, steps will be a little bit different depending on what browser you're using. But if you go to like, you know, connection is secure here and then uh, take a look at the certificate, then we can see that the certificate expires here in 2022. We can see some information about the certificate itself. You know, we can go to details here. We can take a look here at the subject alternate names here. And you can see that this uh, SSL certificate is valid for a number of different uh, example.com, .org, net, edu, et cetera different domains, both with and without uh, www there. And as you can see here, you know, if you just wanted to check the certificate of a site, having to click, you know, many different buttons here, it's not like the end of the world, but to me, it's a lot faster if you can just, you know, slam a good old uh, IV with curl and then uh, 
then you can just get it here. Or if you want to get fancy, maybe you can do uh, VI instead. So usually when it comes to like muscle memory type of things, uh, I like to think of like things that I already know about as an association. So in this case, you know, VI, it's like, ooh, that reminds me of Vim. Like, I don't know, that has nothing to do with SSL certs, but you know, you can do the other way around too. Like IV, like, I don't know, like if you're in a hospital, like an IV could help you stay alive and like your SSL cert helps your site look like it's still alive instead of getting a scary, like insecure warning. So whatever, you know, allows you to uh, memorize these flags. Um, yeah, let me know in the comments below which one you prefer or like whatever crazy uh, analogies you like to make in your own mind. Um, but, you know, going back to the why, you know, I didn't, didn't just wake up one day wondering like, oh, I wish I can run a curl command to like see the expiration date of a certificate. And uh, this came up recently for some work that I'm doing where we have all of our servers hosted on AWS. and AWS has a load balancer, and this is not specific to AWS, but uh, AWS's load balancer, it allows you to attach more than one SSL certificate to it. And if you think about it, that actually makes a lot of sense, right? Like you might have one load balancer, many different services running on many different domains, and you know you would need a different SSL certificate if you had, you know, example.com and like myapp.com and like another site.com. You know, you would need to have uh, multiple SSL certificates there. Well, technically you don't need to have that. You can theoretically have, uh, well, not theoretically, because like pretty pretty standard practice, I guess, you know, if, if you owned a couple of different domains, like, you know, you could have one SSL certificate and just have all the other domains and host names uh, in the SAN uh, portion of that certificate, very similar to what example.com was doing. And we just saw that in the browser before. But, you know, if you want to have separate certificates for each domain, uh, like the root domain, like example.com, um, you can totally do that and attach multiple certificates to the load balancer. And yeah, so we were in the process of switching out an old EV certificate. So I don't know if you noticed this or remember this, but a couple of years ago, a lot of browsers, uh, they would show in green text next to your domain name, you know, per potentially the the, the uh, company name of the site that you're visiting. So uh, Google did this, GitHub did, did this, you know, a lot of big different uh, tech sites used to do this where, you know, you would see like GitHub Incorporated or LLC or whatever, and then you would see like GitHub.com. But browsers stopped showing that, I guess, Maybe it was seen as a little too confusing for non-technical users where it's like you have the domain name, but then like, a you know, another name in front of that, but only on some sites. Like, I don't know the reasoning of why they decided to hide that, but EV certificates used to let you do that. And those were usually more expensive to purchase. And we transitioned all of our EV certificates over to using uh, Amazon's certificate manager service, the ACM service. And, you know, if you happen to be using a load balancer on AWS, you can hook up ACM, you know, those Amazon provision certificates. Uh, there's no extra cost for that. They handle with renewing them. Uh, it's really nice. So, um, yeah, if you have that type of setup, it's, it's even a lot easier than setting up something like Let's Encrypt. But, you know, if you're running your own server directly with no load balancer, then Let's Encrypt, in my opinion, is definitely the way to go there. But long story short, you know, we ended up in a situation where we had both the EV certificate, which was going to expire in a couple of days, and our brand new AWS ACM certificate, both attached to the load balancer. And it was interesting because the EV certificate was specifically for, I'm not going to say the domain now, but, you know, it was example.com and www.example.com, and that's it. Uh, it was only valid for those two host names, like the root domain and the www version. However, when we made the new certificate with ACM, we decided to create the certificate for example.com, but then we also made a wildcard. So we did, uh, you know, star.example.com. So this way it works for www as well as any other subdomains that we have, all from one certificate. And what's interesting about the way AWS works when picking which certificate to use, like it'll first like match on the host name, I guess. Like, I don't know, it, you know, their docs aren't clear on the exact ordering of their algorithm, but it will match on host name. And it probably considers like an EV certificate, I guess, to be better than like a generic one, you know, a regular like ACM certificate where you wouldn't see the company information if browsers still showed it. And it will also very likely pick exact matches over something like a wildcard. So if you want to, uh, www.example.com, chances are if there was a valid certificate that was an EV certificate that actually explicitly matched www.example.com, it would choose that one instead of like picking the wildcard one. But uh, long story short, I wanted to like absolutely make certain that 
when we go to you know www.example.com and example.com that our new AFCM certificate was being used for both of them. And you know, to do that, like I just ran this curl command here and I looked at the certificate information to like check the expiration time to make sure, you know, this detail uh, is all correct here to, you know, to see who actually issued the certificate to make sure it was Amazon and, and not the one that who did the EV certificate. So, you know, it was just a quick way to debug that. And, you know, it's kind of nice because in a browser sometimes it will cache these SSL certs, not for like a really long time. Like if you opened like an incognito window, you would get the new one, but using curl, it's just like, yeah, one command, there's no like second guessing anything. What you see here is what you get. You know, if there's some redirects happening, like they're not gonna happen automatically and we can explicitly see them. But yeah, it was all good to go and uh, everything went smoothly. But yeah, this is uh, the why basically. So with that said, uh, let me know in the comments below if you're going to be using this command. And uh, yeah, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really does help in the end. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video.